I'm sorry. But I don't want to be a, an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by... Meaningful moments, something that tells the story more than just somebody walking around in the crosswalk. See what we can get. Head over to the kitchen. Now. I like shooting here just because of how the light changes almost instantly. We've got real tall buildings, and you can turn a corner and there'll be a sliver of light. Make some nice shadows. Very observant to my surroundings. It's pretty much looking, like I said, for interesting moments. I've shot people loading their little push carts a thousand times, so I don't think I need any more of those photos. I love Tokyo. So many people. Happy. You never know what you're gonna get. There's always something to look at. How did you even get into photography? Good story. So I started photography about 14 years ago when I first joined the Air Force. Uh, moved to Okinawa, Japan, and I met a group of photographers from my cousin. And I got interested in how they were holding the camera, moving around being creative in general. So like a week later, I went and I picked up the camera and was shooting every day after work as much as I could. I was shooting everything. Flowers, leaves, you name it. I was pretty much just trying to learn my camera. The passion and just creating. It grew more and more. It evolved from landscapes and just nature to portraits of people. Fast forward a few years after that, I moved to England. I met a street photographer and I've been hooked on street photography ever since. Took a couple classes, photojournalist, so now I'm really, I consider myself more photojournalist. I like to create, like I said, stories. On my social media account, I don't post a lot, but when I do, it's not singles. It's pretty much an entire series to lead up to a story. My photos are very selective because I pretty much like to start with the intro and then close it out with something very new. I see that you're in Tokyo now. Is this your favorite place to shoot street photography? It is. It's probably, honestly, I'll be, it's, it's my second place to shoot street photography. Only because, like I said, there's a lot of people out here. There's always something new. But my first one would be London. Shooting in London is just completely different because the people are a little more interactive. They're not mm -hmm. uh, as reserved as Japanese culture is. You know, Japanese culture are very me they like to stay to themselves but if you look carefully you can get some real nice moments in london they're just not shy they're they'll be out on the street acting you'll see people fighting drunk people falling over uh, people pissing in, in a little corner you see it all in london just because of that fun factor it's probably my most number one favorite location that i've been to out there when you're shooting photos and you know street photography what are some of the things that you're looking for very it's kind of cliche but unusual characters in a way where i can try to capture it and frame it very interesting uh, like i said i don't want a same image where someone's just walking connection with another human you just kind of know when you see it it just grabs you and kind of like i just did in a cross i remember you were like naming quite a few of the people that you met in the photography industry who do you think like your style best emulates my own. Uh, okay. And I say that because, you know, social media has played a part in everybody's photography as far as what people try to replicate. I don't want to be that photographer who's known for shooting, like, uh, I'm going to just throw names out there and I don't mean no disrespect to the people, but uh, Alan Schaller or Phil Penman because they shoot all black and white. There's a lot of black and white photographers yeah. out there. I'd like my work to be just be known that I like, okay, when you see it, you know that I made that. Mm -hmm. I just pretty much try to look for ways to be different and separate my own creativity from other people's. I will rephrase the question, who inspires you? Ah. Who inspires your work? Okay. That's a, there's so much inspiration out there. Uh, first and foremost, Joel Meyerowitz. Okay, the uh, GOAT. I'm trying to 
link up with him for a little while. We've exchanged a few comments on Instagram. Uh, but Joseph Michael Lopez is another person, like I, I mentioned yeah. him earlier. Phil Penman's another. Mm -hmm. Frank Jackson. Yeah. For those who may not know this, I actually host a podcast in which I met, I go around speaking to photographers as well. And the people I speak to are the ones that inspire me because they have different stories from how I started to where I'm at and the same thing for them from where they started to where they're at now. Mm -hmm. Just hearing their stories is really inspiring too. What's the name of your podcast that you have? The Like a Street Photography Collective. Okay. Yeah. That's great. And you can search for it on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify. If you start typing in the word Leica, it is proven that it's the first one that pops up self-auto generated. So it's completely free. I don't get paid. I don't have any sponsors. That's great. Um, the people I speak to is just because we all love photography. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't pay for any of the marketing yet. I feel like I still got a few more years for, uh, before I'm at the Joe Rogan level. I started off with local photographers. And I use the term local as far as... Uh, not in a disrespectful way, but more of a, at my level, not a Joel Meyerowitz, a Henry Cartier-Bresson, less known photographer, a local person. I also just wanted people to know, like, just because I use the name Leica in my podcast, yeah. I've had people on there as guests that don't shoot with Leica cameras Got well. you. So it's not about the brand, it's more of just the community of street photographers. Leica just happened to fall into there because I shoot with Leica. And I chose Leica as the name only because shooting with other camera brands, I really enjoyed street photography, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I did when I was creating with Leica. Mm -hmm. Just because the camera, it kind of puts you on a different, and this is not any plugs for Leica. Like I said, I'm not sponsored by Leica in any way, but no other camera that I've used personally has made me want to go out and shoot daily. But I have no affiliation with the brand Leica. Other I got than you. I use the camera personally and it has the name in my podcast. And I All like right. this avocado. See, I look for shit like this. I love avocados, avocados a lot. What Japanese street photographers have, you know, influenced you or that you really really like Daido 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 Moriyama number okay. one uh, Araki Provoke era huh uh, Provoke era I love the Provoke era I love all the publications short lived definitely impactful for street photography the whole Japanese Provoke era redefined photography uh, in Japan I could say at least and it started spilling over to the states but definitely Daido Moriyama Araki Suda, shoot meaningful photos. Don't shoot things you don't need to shoot unless it inspires you. Uh, we all know so photography is subjective, but you should feel the photo. You should know why you take the photo.